Hi, how's it going? Today's session is going to be a little longer than usual, but we will go through it fairly rigorously and make sure that we understand it. At the moment, we're at the stage where we're going to create a swap chain. What is a swap chain? Well, in OpenGL, when we create a program, create an OpenGL context and everything, a windowing library will typically make a nice double buffered uh, rendering system for us. This is nice, this is good. However, um, Vulkan does not have a default sort of rendering system that the um, environment gives us. We have to create that ourselves. To start with, um, just going to go down to the logical device creation. We've got what device features? Okay, fair enough. We're also going to um, request some device extensions. Specifically one device extension. So creating the swap chain is still kind of at the device level because, um, well, our device needs to create it, and uh, yeah, that's that's why I'm going to put it there. Anyway, so um, we're requesting the swap chain extension, and then when we go down to the device info for the creation, we have enabled extension count, which we're just going to change that to device extension size, awesome, and then we'll have the um, pointer to the device extensions. Okay, so we are now requesting that our logical device also support a swap chain. No problem. The next thing we want to do is I'm going to make a few functions to basically um, check what sort of swap chain we can create. And we'll start with a struct to hold that data. Okay, so there's three uh, really important things with the swap chain. Um, well, actually, capabilities is a nested structure. It has a lot of important things. Um, but um, just as a really brief overview, and we'll be going more in detail on this, a swap chain will support a certain number of images, right? So double buffering will be two images. Um, single buffering or just immediate would be just one image, um, as well as a bunch of image sizes and and other things. Uh, format is basically uh, the supported uh, pixel formats on, on the screen and present modes will be the um, algorithm which is used for selecting images to present. And we'll be going more in detail. So what I'll do is I'll create a function which basically gets the swap chain support and um, logs out or logs any info to the screen. Okay. So just for completeness, I'm going to head to the engine and we can call this right down here after we make the device. So we'll go um, VK init query swap chain support for our physical device based on our surface. And we'll just put in true, right? Because we're just automatically logging stuff out. Okay. 
So this is just making sure that when I run this, I can I can log the details out. All right, so um, let me just, there's gonna be quite a bit of copy pasting in this session, um, just cause there's a lot of info to get through. But this is how the um, surface capability structure works. So we have all of these fields that we can check. Uh, the minimum number of images supported by the swap chain, maximum number of images, as well as the um, minimum and maximum extents that the swap chain can support. So let's jump into this. Let's go, okay. Just log some of this details out. Okay, so we're just gonna print out the min and max image count. There we go, okay, so. At a minimum, my system can support two images, so double buffering. At a maximum, up to eight images. Okay, that's interesting. Now let's look at the extent. So with the extent, that is its own structure, and it's very simple. All it has is a width and a height. So to create an extent, we would go something like um, VK, extent 2D I don't know width is 120 height is 234 I'm really just making these up and this works this creates an extent that's literally all it is it's it's a width and a height okay so we can go ahead and print all of this out Okay, so we'll get the width and height of the current extent, as well as the minimum and maximum. And as we can see here, all of these are locked to 640 by 480. Now I believe the reason for this is that we have set resizable to false, and so um, it has to be locked. Maybe as an experiment, let's set resizable to true and see if um, the swap chain will support different things. So we'll just go here. Oh, oh, there we are. Okay, let's try this. Let's go glfw true and then see what our swap chain can support. Okay, it still says the same. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. Alrighty. I'm just thinking, this, this is just an experiment off the top of my head. Possibly one explanation for this is that when we resize the window, the swap chain is destroyed and recreated. And so it will be recreated at a different current extent and a different minimum and maximum. All right, cool. So then we have, what do we have next? The um, array layers, where are we? Max image array layers. So we can print that out. Yep, supports one away, array layer. Yep, that makes sense. The window is just a single image, a single surface after all. No worries. Looks reasonable. Okay, so then we have um, the supported transforms. Where are we? Supported transforms and the current transform um, for the swap chain. I'm just going to make a function in logging, which um, performs this. We go to logging.h and right down the bottom. Like I said, there's a lot of copy pasting in this session. Um, okay, there we go. 
So we have this um, surface transform flags, which is essentially a bit mask. And as we can see from the definition here, we have all these different sorts of transforms, which can be applied. And um, based on, so we'll do bitwise and to see which of these are supported. And if a transform is supported, we'll append that um, string description to a vector of strings. And this is, it's really just, it's taking, it's taking a bit mask, de unpacking it and just translating it to English, basically. Okay, cool. By the way, as always, full code is in the description, but um, okay, so we get that list of strings and we just log these all out. Okay, so it looks like supported transforms is just the identity transform. And currently the identity transform is the only transform which is applied to the image. So we could possibly do things like do our rendering as normal and then apply like a, a rotation or a flip to the, to the whole image and output that on the screen. But I think possibly because we're not requesting anything different, it is um, just taking the identity. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what do we have? We have transforms and then um, composite alpha and then supported usage. Okay, so. Just make the composite alpha function. So again, composite alpha is a um, bit mask. And we're just unpacking the bit mask and getting the, um, the labels for it. Yep. So then we run this and, um, yeah, we're just going to have an opaque window. So not a transparent window. Fair enough. Okay. Then we have image usage. Okay, so we have the um, the capabilities supported image usage flags. No worries, we'll just go over and make another function to log that. So these strings, by the way, I, I copy pasted them from the Vulkan specification. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we have these bits and then these are all the different options that we can have. It is useful to read through. Okay, so we have actually, I'll just, just use it. <laughs> okay. So what can we do? Well, um, the swap chain can be used as a source for a, an image transfer and it can be used as a destination of an image transfer. It can be sampled. So the way we do this, the way we use images is we create a Vulkan image view, and then we send that to a, a Vulkan descriptor slot. Um, and as we can see, we can either have a sampled image or a combined image sampler. Okay. And both of those types of descriptors can be sampled by a shader. Okay. Um, we can also use swap chain images for general storage. Fair enough. We can also use them as a color buffer, basically. It says a color or resolve attachment. Now a resolve attachment is when we have a multi-sampled frame buffer. Um, we render with a multi-sampled frame buffer, and then that gets resolved down to a, a single sample frame buffer. It's basically what, that's what that thing is. And input attachment. So an input attachment is a way, in other words, if we have a render pass with multiple passes inside it, kind of like deferred shading, you have your geometry pass, then your rendering pass and your lighting pass and so on. Um, those have sub passes and each sub pass depends on another one. You can set um, an image up as an input so it can take 
it can take input from a previous subpass or things. And there's a whole lot of other things as well. So if we look in here, um, we have like depth stencil attachment, transient attachment, if um, we want lazy um, memory allocation, so memory is allocated like when it's needed. Uh, fragment density map is a little more esoteric. From my reading on this, it's essentially we can have a map indicating how like what the area of each fragment on the screen should be. I'm not really 100% on that. I haven't really done that work before. Um, and we can also have a map describing how frequently different fragments should be updated and things. But this is this is probably more on the mobile end where um, like tiled rendering and things, like you can't render the whole screen at once. You want to render certain bits selectively. Anyway. Where was I? Okay. So those are the options that we have for capability. Those are the properties of a swap chain capability. The next thing that we have is the surface formats. I'll just paste this all at once. This is um, not too bad. So the surface format is a struct which has two um, fields the basically the pixel format and the color space that we're looking at. And the Vulkan HPP header has a nice to string function. Actually, it also has a to string function for the other things as well. I just wanted to log them out with more detailed descriptions. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and run this. So we go get the surface formats and then, yeah, you can see what we're doing here. All right, so looking through here, we have a format which is um, this RGB eight bits each, but you know, you know, formats and orders a bit different, it's a bit weird. Um, but this is unsigned um, normalized data, okay, in sRGB nonlinear color space, okay. Then we have sRGB color format in nonlinear, it's all nonlinear color space. And then we have this uh, 10 bit color where we go 10 bits for each of red, green, blue, then we only have two bits left for alpha. And uh, yeah, so those are the possible pixel formats and color spaces. We'll select one of those as well. And um, then there's one more bit, which is the present mode. And similarly, I'm going to make a log present mode function as well. So as we can see here, our present mode is um, more of an enum. It's not, it's not a bit mask. We can't have individual things. Um, but here, what do we have? We have um, immediate mode, which is um, pretty much just displaying things as soon as they're rendered. That can produce um, vertical tearing because, well, if you're potentially rendering to an image at the same time that it's being displayed, that can give some weird effects. Then we have this mailbox FIFO, and this is important here for FIFO. It says, this is the only value of present mode that is required to be supported. So we're always guaranteed that we'll have FIFO. And there's a bit of, um, yeah, there are some other, some other options here, which you can read through in the, in the spec or in the code. Anyway, so there's a bit of contention about what's the difference between mailbox and FIFO. Well, what we have is both of these refresh in the next vertical blanking period. Um, but the difference is, and both do not have vertical tearing. Um, in FIFO, we have an internal queue, which holds the present request. So let's say we have th uh, two images. We want to present one, then we want to present another. So there are two images in the, um, two images waiting to be presented. If our engine wants to render something, it can't grab an image and render to it because the two images that are available are both on the present queue. 
and it waits. So this enforces, it basically fixes the program to the screen's refresh rate or the video card's refresh rate. On the other hand, this mailbox does essentially the same thing, except the presentation queue only has, where is it? Only has a single entry. So if there are two images, we grab one, render to it, and then request a presentation. It goes on the queue. Then if the engine is super quick and renders the next one, then that actually overwrites the initial uh, presentation. And then image one, which was waiting to be presented, is then returned to the queue, and that can be rendered to again. So long story short, mailbox presentation is the fastest present mode, which does not have um, visual artifacts like vertical tearing and things. Okay. So anyway, let's have a look at this and see which present modes are supported. So we are allowed to do FIFO. We're allowed to do relaxed FIFO as well as mailbox and immediate. Okay. That's nice to know. So those were our kind of logging functions and they seem to be working. So we can go back to our engine and remove that, remove that line. Now let's get into actually creating the swap chain. So, one of the intermediate steps in that is to um, choose which parameters, choose which parameters we're going to set for capabilities, formats, and present mode. So we'll just make some helper functions here. from inspection before, we know that both of these will be supported. So basically what we do is we just look in, see if we have these, this is the preferred mode, we return that, and simply if not, then it doesn't matter, just return the first one that we have. Okay, cool. Then we want to choose a present mode. Okay, so like we noted, FIFO is the only present mode which is guaranteed to be supported by our system. So if everything else fails, just return that. We'll always have that. By the way, there are some benefits to a slower frame rate or a slower refresh rate. On mobile systems, refreshing at a thousand frames per second when it's not necessary has big impacts on the power consumption of the app. Not so much in our case. I want to just run the thing as much as I can. So I'm just going to go mailbox. Okay. Then the last thing that we're doing here is we need to get the uh, extent that we're going to use.
Okay, so here we have it. As we saw when we logged this out before, this is going to pretty much just go with the first branch of this if statement, because everything has been nicely set up. However, in some systems, this uint32 max is a flag to say that the, the size, the extent has not been specified and it will pretty much support anything and we need to request it. So that's what we're doing on this branch down here. Okay, cool. So now we're going to actually create the swap chain and we're not just gonna create a swap chain, but there's a bunch of other things which we're going to create at the same time. So I'm going to create another struct up here to um, hold all of that data. So we create a swap chain. Fine, it's good, it exists. But we're also going to grab handles to the images created by the swap chain, the frames that it uses for its rendering. And we're also going to take note of the format and extent that we chose for the swap chain. As you can see here, we are taking a lot of parameters. Now it would be valid simply to take a pointer to the thing, to, to the engine object, which is creating the swap chain. However, um, I don't want to, <laughs> but also, also because it could potentially cause some kind of circular imports where the engine is importing device.h and then device.h is importing engine.h in, in order to know about the engine. It's just, mm, yeah, it's just potentially a little messy. So I'm just gonna keep it this way for now, even though I do hate these functions with lots and lots of um, different parameters, but yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. Okay. I'm also going to select how many images will be created on the swap chain. We saw before that our surface will support um, two images at minimum, double buff buffered rendering. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one so that we can increase the frame rate a little bit. So when we render one, we're not held up waiting for the next one to be presented. And do you know what I mean? Um, so this just doesn't really do anything to the stability, it just increases the frame rate, having one extra image. And of course, we just wanna make sure we're not exceeding our maximum. So at this point, we're going to um, create the swap chain create info. And these are the fields which need to be populated here. So um, we'll just go ahead and make this. Okay, so we have a bunch of things that we can set straight away. Um, we have flags as the first argument, so we can pass in the inbuilt um, swap chain create flags. Then we have the surface. Okay, no worries, we have that. 
Then we have the minimum image count, which we're just going to set as image count. Then the format, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, then image array layers, I'm just going to pass in one. Image usage, we're going to say, okay, that is color attachment. Okay. And there are some other parameters. However, I'm going to, these ones I'm going to pass in, in the constructor and the other ones I'm going to kind of dynamically set. One thing we need to do is just check the usage because what do we have next? We have the sharing mode and then, um, the, the, um, what am I thinking? The cues, which are going to be using it. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll get the Q families again. Okay, so remember there is the possibility that our present family was a different index to our graphics family. In that case, our swap chain will be concurrently shared. In other words, there'll be two separate queue families acting on it, two separate queues acting on it. Okay, in that case, we can set, um, we can set this information, set it to concurrent mode, tell Vulcan that two queues will be using it and pass in the indices of those queue families. Fair enough. Um, otherwise it'll be exclusively used by one queue. Okay. And this other information does not need to be set. Okay. Cool. Uh, so then we have a bunch of other bits of information. I'm just going to copy paste this in. So we're going to set a pre-transform composite alpha, present mode, and all of that, and clipped, yes. So uh, we are using clipping on this. So for instance, if a triangle is partly off screen, it will be, you know, clipped off, of course. No, of course that's of course that's true. Sorry, I'm going crazy. Okay, so I believe what clipped means in this case is if we have our window open, here it is, and then there's another window partially in front of it, then the bits which are covered will not be rendered behind the scenes. I believe so. Anyway, right, uh, then we set old swap chains. So what we can do is if we're recreating a swap chain, we can inherit from another swap chain to kind of speed things up a little bit, inherit some some parameters, but um, I'm just gonna leave that. Now we can go ahead and create our bundle. Okay, so there we have it. Um, great. So we go ahead, create the swap chain, pass that in, and then we get the images. By the way, these images already exist. They exist when the swap chain is created. All this is doing is getting the images which already exist. Okay, cool. Right, so let's go to our engine and use this. To start with, we will need 
a bunch of variables. So we'll go um, and extend. Awesome. Cool. So we'll go then to the device section and we'll say um, Okay, cool, that's looking great. Run this right now and it seems to work. Except that it, huh, well, it should give an error. It should give an error, but I'm not sure why it didn't because here's what we also need to do. We also need to say, okay, device destroy swap chain. We do not need to destroy the images, I believe. Let me just try that. Ah, no, it's fine. Because the images are owned by the swap chain and when the swap chain is destroyed, it goes through and destroys the images. Okay. So again, we run that. And yeah, it works. No issues at all. Anyway, bit of a long one today, but hopefully it was illuminating. And um, yeah, this code is in the description. So you can go in and have a look at all of these options and these enums and see what they mean. But um, again, basically what we did is we created a swap chain, which is the rendering procedure of um, selecting an image, rendering to it, selecting an image, presenting it sets up for that, for double buffering, triple buffering, and so on. We had a look at the different um, extents and image counts and, and all the different options that we can have, the capabilities that we can have for our swap chain, as well as our pixel formats and color spaces and the like. And yeah, I mean, that's it. Hopefully we're learning and um, getting comfortable with um, Vulkan. Anyway, have fun. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.